If you don't know your enemy, how are you ever going to fight it? Hey guys, it is Bible Scribe. Welcome back. This is part four in our six part series on Satan. And we have gone a long way. We've looked at a lot of different terms uh, and entities, uh, names for Satan or for other beings, because we're trying to vet out all the different terms and possibilities that are involved when you talk about Satan in ancient literature. And so in our first video, we had an overview. We talked about all those different names and mentioned them all. So we're now going through them. And this is going to be one of the larger videos of the six because we are hitting the actual name of Satan this time. Let me bring up our overview for this video. We're going to be going through Satan, Tartarus, Baal, and Belial, all those terms and names in this one video. So it is going to be awesome. <laughs> it's going to be big. Let's get started with Satan. Again, there's, there's uh, six videos total. So just know that as we go through these names, there's going to be connections to other names. And we won't see all those till the last video. So make sure you see that last video, video six, once it's out there, so that you can see why all these things different things were so important because they all connect in certain ways. So let me jump over here with our first slide, searching for the name and the being Satan. What do the ancient writings say about Satan? So this is going to be one of the bigger sections on the name Satan. Satan in the Bible, first of all. Uh, we're not going to go through every mention of the name Satan in the Bible, but some of the more uh, personal name mentions of Satan in the Bible. Mark 3.23, And he called them unto him, and said unto them in parables. This is Jesus Christ talking. Uh, how can Satan cast out Satan? So Jesus is referring specifically to a being Satan and asking them a rhetorical question. How can Satan cast himself out? All right, and in the same uh, passage, just a verse away, he says also, how can, uh, if Beelzebub or Satan casts out demons, you know, why would he do that? Again, a rhetorical question. So obviously Satan won't work against himself. And uh, in Luke ten eighteen, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So this reference is Jesus Christ speaking. He says he saw Satan fall from heaven. Now, he must mean a particular being. He's not talking about, you know, a generic adversaries. This is a certain being. He calls Satan and he says, I saw him fall from heaven. So we know that that is on our radar. A fall from heaven is part of this being's history, as far as Jesus is concerned. Obviously, it had already happened. Then Satan linked to Beelzebub. In Luke eleven eighteen, he said, If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub. So Jesus connects the term Satan with Beelzebub right there. And we're actually going to go into the term Beelzebub later on, but just to know, even in the Bible, Jesus connects the two. It's very important. In 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, we'll read 14 and 15, And no marvel, for Satanas, in the Greek, Satan, himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose ends shall be according to their works. So not only can Satan transform himself into an angel of light, but it says his ministers can also be transformed into the ministers of righteousness. So if we think about this, you know, not only does Satan, he is a fallen angel. He can transform himself and appear to be a righteous angel, an angel of light, or at least kind of mimic that image because he came from that, right? Although he has fallen. And then it says his ministers can also appear as ministers of righteousness. Now let's think of this both from a spiritual aspect and a human aspect. If we're talking about his hosts, his angelic demonic host, then those ministers can appear as angels of light, like good angels, good spirits, 
And then if we're talking about human ministers of Satan, then they can obviously deceive and appear to be good people, right? So this is a very deep kind of verse telling us that those working with Satan will try to and can appear as the good ones, though they are not. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength for the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So this verse is talking about Satan and is calling him the accuser of our brethren. The accuser of the chosen of God. Now, this being brethren here in context would be the Jews, all right, the nation of Israel. So, we also have now gained an insight to another attribute of this one called Satan, and that is that he accused the people of Israel in front of God day and night. And he, at this time in Revelation, when this prophecy was to be fulfilled, he would be cast down from that position. All right? Cast down from that. Very interesting. In Revelation 20, verse 2, it also mentions Satan. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So, this verse is incredible. And there's another one like it in Revelation, but it connects all these terms together at once, saying that the dragon, the old serpent, the devil, and Satan are all referencing the same being. All right, so this helps us with the word devil, and it helps us with the word Satan. These are all synonymous in this verse. And then the words dragon and serpent, we at least know from this verse that References to a serpent or a dragon at least could be references to Satan as well, right? Not always. Every time it talks about a serpent in the Bible, it's not always talking about Satan. But we can now, with these goggles, say, if it says serpent, maybe I need to just reread the passage and make sure it's not talking about something spiritual, a spiritual being who it's referencing as the serpent, okay? So that's the way you kind of take these and study them. Uh, when it gives you these hints. So in other sources outside the Bible, so we didn't go through everything in the Bible, but enough to see how Satan's referenced and a few of the attributes that he is given with his proper name, Satan, even though that word means accuser, it is used as a proper name. And so he was given in the Bible some attributes and characteristics that we just read through. Now, in the book of Jasher, in chapter 22, verse 46, it says, And the day arrived when the sons of God came and placed themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with the sons of God before the Lord. In this context, this whole chapter of Jasher is where Abraham is going to kill his son Isaac and sacrifice him for God. Um, and then he is prevented from doing so, obviously, but... The interesting thing is that Jasher and a couple of these other sources open this story up a little bit and help us understand the spiritual behind what was going on. So this, this being named Satan came with the sons of God. The sons of God were the... You, it's a general term for angel, but I think in this context it's the... Uh, highest level of angels, archangels, or you know the court of God in heaven around his throne. And so it says Satan came with the sons of God, those high angels, and came up to God's throne. And he asked, essentially, in the book of Joshua, he asked God if he can tempt Abraham to kill Isaac. So this is actually, and we're going to see another reference to this. You may never have heard this before, but, but Abraham was tempted by Satan to kill his son Isaac, not by God. God didn't tempt Abraham. God allowed Satan to try Abraham just like he allowed Satan to try Job in the book of Job, if you remember that. But this is the reference. And it, uh, so Satan came with the sons of God before the Lord in an attempt to 
tempt Abraham and kill Isaac, which would obviously have killed the bloodline of Christ if it had actually occurred. If Adam had killed Isaac, the bloodline of Christ would have stopped. So, but God knew enough about Abraham's faith to allow this tempting. In the Gospel of Nicodemus, another source, the descent into hell, in chapter 7, verse 1, we have all these names for Satan, all these titles. So we have to at least recognize them and see what we can do with them as far as comparing them to other sources. And this is all in one verse, but man, if you haven't read the Gospel of Nicodemus, do it. It is incredible. Satan is called the prince. He's called the chief of death. He's called the prince of Tartarus. He's called the father of all the wicked and ungodly and renegades. He's called also the holder of the keys of Hades. He's called the author of death and the head of all pride. Now, just from the things that you generally have heard probably in your past about Satan, you probably have heard some of these things. But here's an actual like first or second century writing, Christian writing, that tells you all of these things specifically. And so it is so incredible to find these sources where this information came from, not just hearsay from a pastor or a teacher or a, a you know, uh, you know, a, an author of a book. You know, these are the actual sources. Amazing, amazing stuff. I love this. Gospel of Nicodemus also in chapter 6 verse 2 there's this statement, Then did the king of glory, and of course this is Jesus Christ, as he came down into Hades after his death to rescue the captives. Then did the king of glory and his majesty trample upon death and lay hold on Satan, the prince, and delivered him unto the power of Hades. Now this word death, just so you know, as we went through in our previous video, Thanatos is the name, is the Greek name given to death. So he trampled on Thanatos. He laid hold of Satan, the prince, and delivered him unto the power of Hades. Hades is the watch care, watch taker over uh, the realm of Hades, which is the abode of the dead. And so Jesus bound Satan and took him to Hades to keep. And he drew Adam and the souls of the righteous to him and his own brightness. So just... The whole narrative of the Gospel of Nicodemus is absolutely mind-blowing. But this is a, a brief statement that shows what's happening. And so Satan was included here in this. And he, at this time, sounds like he was taking hold of and put in Hades, right? Right. Now, in the Book of Jubilees, there's also a bunch of stuff about Satan. <clears throat> Excuse me. Chapter 23, 29, And all their days they shall complete and live in peace and joy, and there shall be no Satan or any evil destroyer, for all their days shall be days of blessing and healing. Now some of these references I included, they are general references to a Satan, like an adversary, uh, not necessarily a proper name, but it's interesting to see. These are here, and then there's some proper references to an entity called Satan as well. And we're going to see both. In chapter 40, verse 9, the land of Egypt was at peace before Pharaoh because of Joseph. For the Lord was with him and gave him favor and mercy all his generations before all those who knew him and all those who heard concerning him. And Pharaoh's kingdom was well ordered and there was no Satan, no adversary and no evil person. So that to me, just reading that verse, you can see that it's like, why would he say there is no adversary if he only meant humans? He wouldn't. So the writer then says there's no Satan and there's no evil person, meaning there's no evil spirits working at that time and there's no evil humans working at that time either in Pharaoh's kingdom. It was a very peaceful time when Joseph was in leadership in Egypt. And so that's the statement here. And yes, that's not a proper name reference to Satan, but it's talking about there's no evil forces at work and they're in the spiritual realm, and there's no human evil people at work in the kingdom of Pharaoh at that time. In chapter 46, verse 2, And there was no Satan or any evil all the days of the life of Joseph. Another same statement, just like the last, 
which he lived after his father Jacob, for all the Egyptians honored the children of Israel all the days of the life of Joseph. So a similar statement. No adversaries, no, uh, no uh, spiritual adversaries, no human adversaries at the time of Joseph in Egypt. Chapter 50, verse 5, And the Jubilees shall pass by until Israel is cleansed from all guilt, fornication, uncleanness, pollution, sin, and error, and dwells with confidence in all the land. There shall no more be a Satan or any evil one, and the land shall be clean from that time forevermore. Again, another common uh, general term, Satan, no adversary, but it is a spiritual adversary. Uh, there shall be no more that. And this is talking about after Israel is cleansed, uh, and that occurred in the first century, A.D. 70. Continuing on the book of Jubilees, now on to some of these specific named references of Satan. Chapter 10, verse 11, We did according to all his words, and all the malignant evil ones were bound in the place of condemnation. And a tenth part of them we left that they might be subject before Satan on earth. All right, now some context around this verse. This is the portion of the book of Jubilees it is after the flood of Noah. It is after Noah's sons have come and, and they have settled around Mount Ararat out of the ark. And what they found as they started going to and fro was that demons, the dead spirits of the giants, this is incredible, you got to read it for yourself. The dead spirits of the giants, which were called demons, started to harass the sons of Noah and cause them to be sick and cause them to have trouble and pain. And so Noah goes to God and asks, and then Satan comes to God and says, hey, don't cast out my demons. Let me keep at least a tenth of them so I may work what I'm supposed to do on earth th through my demons against humanity. Apparently, Satan has this position where he is supposed to come against humankind at least so far as to tempt away those that are wicked. All right, I'm going to leave that right there, but there's more information on that as we go forward. But Satan comes to God at this time after Noah does, and he says, don't take away all of the demons. Let me have ten, a tenth of them to work my work upon the earth. And just so you know, this next point, that this narrator in the book of Jubilees, if you've ever read the book of Jubilees, is an angel. It's called, he's called an angel of the presence of God. He's a, a servant angel who these angels are given tasks by God. They're, they're executors. So uh, this is the angel of God's presence talking about imprisoning the fallen angels who copulated with human women. Um, and so anyway... It's related to Genesis 6 and the incursion of the angels with human women, but this is the uh, this is Satan pleading with God to keep tenth of the demons for his own personal use. In verse 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 8, in the same context, the being called Satan is also called Mastema. All right, so that name is now on our radar, Mastema, and it is used all through the Book of Jubilees. So it is important now that we understand that the being Mastema is Satan. All right? There's a direct connection, and we know it is a, a good connection. Okay, now in the book of Enoch, we were just in the book of Jubilees. We're going on to the book of Enoch. Chapter 40, verse 7, I heard the fourth voice fending off the Satans and forbidding them to come before the Lord of Spirits to accuse them who dwell on the earth. Now this, obviously, is a general reference to multiple beings called adversaries, Satans. And so, uh, you know, just a statement in the book of Enoch, I don't remember all the context of this verse, like what's the storyline going on there, but just know that that's there, and it is talking about adversaries, but they're all spiritual angel adversaries, uh, but this is not a proper name reference to a being specifically. Chapter 53, verse 4, or excuse me, verse 3, For I saw all the angels of punishment abiding there and preparing all the instruments of Satan. So this is a specific being reference to Satan, and it is all the angels of punishment, and preparing the, they were preparing the instruments of Satan. So, you know, there's some, there's a connection here with the underworld and the, the angels of punishment and you know, that's where all his connections lie, this being, this 
this one adversary that is the main one talked about that is called Satan uh, and Mastema and all these other names. Chapter 54, verse 6, And Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, and Phanuel shall take hold of them, and that's talking about the host of Azazel, on that great day, and cast them on that day into the burning furnace, so that the Lord of spirits, who is God, may take vengeance on them for their unrighteousness, in becoming subject to Satan, and leading astray those who dwell on the earth. So, recognize in this verse what is being said. Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Phanuel are all good angels who stuck with God and did not fall. And they take the host of Azazel, which is referenced earlier in the passage, and they are punished for, taking, for becoming subject to Satan. If they're the host of Azazel, and then it says they're subject to Satan, who is Azazel? Probably. There's a connection there between Azazel now and Satan. Uh, and we're going to see that reinforced a couple different times, but we're going to go through that name Azazel specifically in the next video, I believe. So uh, we're going to see that even more as we go forward. Chapter 65, verse 6, And a command has gone forth from the presence of the Lord concerning those who dwell on the earth, that their ruin is accomplished, because they have learned all the secrets of the angels and all the violence of the Satans and all their powers the most secret ones, and all the power of those who practice sorcery and witchcraft and make molten images for the whole earth. So again, a general term, Satans, uh, and in reference to the, the fallen angels and their deeds with mankind of teaching secrets of the heavens to mankind before the flood. Uh, after they had come and mated with women, created a race of giants, Nephilim, uh, it was just a mess, and then it's just saying that this is the violence of the Satans. So in this case, it sounds like some of these fallen angels were all called adversaries, right? This generic term, Satans. However, when we see the term Satan singular used, it generally is, uh, especially in a proper sense, seems to be referencing the single singular being that we keep finding out these attributes of. Not tons of different beings, but one that we're building up a profile on. And that's what we're doing as we go here. Now, the Gospel of Bartholomew, a first or quote-unquote second century writing, uh, Christian writing, chapter 4, verse 25. And this, the narrative of the Gospel of Bartholomew parallels Nicodemus really closely in a lot of ways. And you're going to see that as we read, but... 425, at the first I was called Satanael, which is interpreted a messenger of God, but when I rejected the image of God, my name was called Satanus, that is the angel that keepeth hell, or Tartarus. All right, so there's a lot here to unpack. The, the context of this verse is Bartholomew goes to Jesus Christ right before his ascension. So Jesus Christ has resurrected, he's in his resurrected body form, and the whole Gospel of Bartholomew is Bartholomew and the Apostles and Mary asking questions of Jesus before he goes to heaven. And so he asks, in this case, he asks God, or he asks Jesus if he can talk to Satan himself. <laughs> it's crazy. And then Jesus allows it. And in a vision, he goes, or he goes to Hades and he talks to Satan himself. And that's who's speaking here is Satan in this passage. At the first, I was called Satanael. Then that, any, any name that ends, by the way, in L is usually an angel. Uriel, Gabriel, Michael, that, because L is God. <laughs> Sons of God all end in L, <laughs> all right? Um, but he says at first he was called Satanael. And it was interpreted as messenger of God, but I rejected the image of God, meaning he rejected mankind. Who was made in the image of God? It was man. And so Satan rejected that image because he said, oh, well, I don't want to go into some of the stuff we're going to study, but he said, I was created first. Why should I bow down to man? <laughs> but when I rejected the image of God, my name was called Satanas. That is angel that keeps hell or Tartarus. 
So now we have more clues that he had a previous name, Satanael, and he kept the uh, he kept Tartarus, which is the place of the abyss where the angels who fell in Genesis six and and took women, human wives, created the Nephilim. That is where they were imprisoned in Tartarus. So again, this connection now reminds us of the connection to Azazel in the book of Enoch, right? Because he was one of the angels that uh, participated and and encouraged other hosts to fall and to commit atrocities on the earth. And so, uh, man, the connections just at this point get almost overwhelming. Uh, And that next point Satan was formed as the first angel before Michael, and this is in verse 28 of the same chapter of Bartholomew. We also were created by the will of the Son and the consent of the Father. This is a statement that's made. So again, reinforcing that Jesus Christ was the creator. You know, he was acting in God's will as the executor of creation. And it says in this passage, too, that Gabriel was the third angel created. Satan was the first, then Michael, then Gabriel, then Uriel, then Raphael, then Nathaniel, and then other angels. And it says in this passage, I could not tell the names of those angels um, for some reason. But uh, so interesting, so amazing. Chapter 4, verse 42, the Latin version of this text of the Gospel of Bartholomew calls Satan, also calls him Belier, but then calls him the Antichrist, right there in the passage. So I, I'm not going to go into the term Antichrist, but to me it was interesting that this first century writing of the Christians called Satan directly the Antichrist, because he was against Christ. He was the opposition to Christ, right? Very interesting. Amazing. Now, in the Gospel of Nicodemus, which we read also about our previous term, but in chapter 7, verse 1, Hades calls Satan, the prince of perdition, the chief of destruction, Beelzebub. So now we have a connection directly between Satan and Beelzebub. Not only did we have that in the Bible, if you remember, but now we've got it in the Gospel of Nicodemus. So, does this connect Satan to the Garden of Eden? It says... In the Gospel of Nicodemus, those thy riches which thou hast gained by the tree of transgression, talking to Satan here, riches you had gained by the tree of transgression and the losing of paradise, thou hast lost by the tree of the cross. So he's saying everything, Satan, that you gained in the garden by tempting Eve and Adam with the tree, you have now lost because of the tree of the cross. Amazing. I love that statement. I love it. The king of glory says then unto Hades, Jesus Christ says unto Hades in this passage, Satan the prince shall be in thy power unto all ages. So again, we read earlier where Jesus takes Satan, binds him, and delivers him to Hades to keep. And this is what he says to him, that Satan will be in his power unto all ages. Now that phrase in Greek is a little hard to translate, but at least for an age of time, he was going to be bound. And if we, if you've read Revelation 20, you know the binding of Satan happened, and it lasted for a thousand years, right? Very interesting. Very amazing. And then Christ, uh, I don't, actually, this statement I am a little confused by. I don't remember what I meant here. I tempted him. Oh, oh, this is Satan saying in the the Gospel of Nicodemus that I'm the one that tempted him, meaning Christ. So again, Satan connected in this writing to Beelzebub and Belier, and he says, I'm the one who tempted Christ in the wilderness. So all these connections now starting to come together. It's amazing. Other sources, other Christian sources, the Testament of Dan, For I have read in the book of Enoch, the righteous, that your prince is Satan, and that all the spirits of wickedness and pride will conspire and attend constantly the sons of Levi to cause them to sin before the Lord. So the prince Satan, Testament of Dan, chapter 2, verse 14, Now fear the Lord, my children, beware of Satan and his spirits, a a specific being, Satan, who is ruler or leader of spirits. What do we also hear? Prince of spirits? 
prince of the powers of the air. These different terms now are starting to all come together and make sense. Testament of Asher 134, for the latter ends of men do show their righteousness or unrighteousness when they meet the angels of the Lord and of Satan. And at death, there's going to be angels there, whether you are wicked and you see the angels of Satan or you are righteous and the angels of the Lord come to get you. Think about that. The Ascension of Isaiah is another writing that I've uh, recently discovered and just really enjoy. It is, um, you know, dated to question mark, but it is uh, prior to Christ. It is that old, is um, really amazing read. Um, I encourage you to get a hold of it. It's not very long, but it tells the story of Isaiah, but in the midst of that tells a bunch of different things. In 2.2, it says, uh, uh, Manasseh forsook the power or uh, service of the God of his father, meaning God, the real God, and he served Satan and his angels and his powers. So again, a specific reference to Satan and his hosts, angels and powers that are under Satan's rulership. 2.7, and when Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw the lawlessness which was being perpetrated in Jerusalem and the worship of Satan and his wantonness, he withdrew from Jerusalem and settled in Bethlehem of Judah. Worship of Satan happening in Jerusalem. Is that amazing or is that amazing? And this is in the time of Isaiah. So this is way prior to Christ. They, there was a sect of Jerusalem worshiping Satan himself. And this is the prophets of Baal. This is, a, this is part of that narrative of the prophets of Baal when they came and sacrificed and Isaiah sacrificed and God sent fire down and burnt them up. 5.16, and on account of the destruction of Samael, now here is a reference to Samael, but it is, um, it's a human. It's a human named Samael. So we had a previous, our previous video included the name Samael as a deity, a Akkadian or, you know, Mesopotamian deity, but this is not that. This is a human named Samael which he had seen through the Lord while Hezekiah, his father, was still king, and he did according to the will of Satan. So Satan being, you know, this being and that this Samael was evil, turned away from God and did the will of Satan. Not the Satan, not a Satan, not of the Satans. It's of Satan himself. 7, 9, and we ascended to the firmament. Now this is Isaiah being taken on a ride through the heavens by God. And seeing visions of the different levels of heaven. And it says, We ascended to the firmament, and he I and he, and there I saw Samael and his host. Now this Samael is obviously a being, a spiritual being, with hosts. So this does give us a little bit of a connection to the possibility Samael is another name for Satan. It says, And there was great fighting therein, and the angels of Satan were envying one another. So this Samael, now we may have more clue that this is an actual name of Satan. Um, very interesting, very interesting. Still in the ascension of Isaiah 11, 23, and I saw him, Jesus, after the resurrection, and he was, and this is part of still of Isaiah's vision as he was in heaven, but it was after he went through heaven, God showed him then a picture of some of the future events. And for him, Jesus Christ, of course, coming was that and I saw him Jesus after his resurrection and he was in the firmament but he had not changed himself into their form and all the angels of the firmament and the Satan saw him and they worshiped so in his resurrected form he went straight into heaven he didn't wasn't back in his necessarily his original form but in his resurrected human form and the Satans the adversaries there saw him and they worshiped him 1141, on account of these visions and prophecies, Samael, Satan, sawed in half Isaiah, the son of Amos, the prophet by the hand of Manasseh. So again, uh, Samael referenced with the word name Satan. You know, is it saying he is Satan or that this human Samael is connected to Satan? It's hard to know exactly. But uh, regardless, we know there's a connection and that this is the verse where it talks about Isaiah being sawn in half. If you've ever heard that Isaiah had been sawn in half, this is the passage. This is the source of where that knowledge comes from. 
Um, amazing, amazing. 11.43, but Manasseh did not remember them nor place these things in his heart, because, but becoming the servant of Satan, he was destroyed. Uh, Manasseh became evil completely and was destroyed. Here endeth the vision of Isaiah the prophet with his ascension. That ends the book, essentially. Secrets of Enoch. Now, this is not the book of Enoch. It's a different uh, writing, but also, you know, in the Ethiopic Bible and kept alongside uh, I think some people call this Enoch 3 or 2. I, I don't remember. It's hard to keep them all straight, honestly, in my head. Uh, in chapter 31, though, there's some mention of some stuff that is relevant. Verse 3, And he was continuously in paradise, and the devil understood that I wanted to create another world, because Adam was Lord on earth to rule and control it. The devil is the evil spirit of the lower places. As a fugitive, he made Sotona from the heavens as his name was Satanael. Now, what did we hear that? We heard that name already, Satanael, as his original name in the Gospel of Bartholomew. Thus he became different from the angels, but his nature did not change but his nature did not change his intelligence as far as his understanding of righteous and sinful things. So his nature changed when Satan's nature changed when he fell. But his intelligence, his understanding of righteousness and sin, that did not change. And so uh, that went with him. Verse 5, And he understood his condemnation, this is Satan, and the sin which he had sinned before. Therefore he conceived thought against Adam, in such form, he entered and seduced Eve, but did not touch Adam. So Satan here, understanding his condemnation because of his sin, he understands it, although he doesn't like it, right? But then, because he was bitter over this, he conceived a way to try to destroy man whom God had said he had to worship, and he didn't want to. <laughs> so he conceived against Adam and Eve how he might tempt and destroy them. Um, So, there we go. So, summary over Satan. Just to lay things back down, you know, we've gone through a ton of references, a ton of sources. Satan commands fallen angels and demons. Satan and his angels can appear as ministers of light. He holds the key to Hades, the underworld, or at least did, all right? Prince He's the prince and the keeper of Tartarus, the area of the abyss where the fallen angels from Genesis 6 are in, were imprisoned after their incursion. All these names, dragon, old serpent, devil, Satan, they were all related to Satan in even the Bible, uh, but also in the other writings that we read. Uh, what other uh, names did we hear? We heard Beelzebub, Belier, Samael, Satanael, all of these names now connecting to Satan. Satan tempted Eve in the garden. Satan tempted Abraham to kill Isaac. And Satan tempted Christ. Satan fell from heaven. He ruled over the earth. That was his lot after he fell and ruled over mankind. He accused Israel before God constantly. Satan was cast down from heaven. He was bound by Christ and delivered to Hades, according to these first century Christian writings. When Christ died, he went and bound Satan in Hades. Satan was also, now, these are the names that are going to be important to us as we continue to study. Satan also called Mastema. Satan also called Azazel, Beelzebub, Belier, and Antichrist. All these names were made synonymous with Satan in the passages that we read. So keep that in our pocket. So uh, we're not going to be too much longer, but we'll go through Tartarus here very briefly. Just so you know what Tartarus is, uh, in the, the Gospel of Bartholomew 425, Belier answered, and that's Satan, Belier answered and said, If thou wilt know my name, at the first I was called Satanael, which is interpreted messenger of God, but then when I rejected the image of God, my name was called Satanus. That is the angel that keepeth Tartarus. All right, so knowing only that Tartarus at this point is a place and that Satan was the keeper of it. In Gospel of Nicodemus, the descent into hell, 4-2, Satan, the prince of Tartarus, said, da 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 
So we know, again, I echoed that Satan was the prince of this place, Tartarus. All right. That's all for Tartarus. It's very short because it's really not ever referenced as an entity. It's only a place and it's in the abyss. It's where the angels that fell and uh, copulated with human women were imprisoned. So now we are searching for the term and name Baal. What do the writings say about Baal? It is found in the book, in the Bible, in the book of Jasher, in the book of Tobit, and in the ascension of Isaiah. Baal means generally Lord. It's, uh, I believe it's Babylonian. Uh, it means Lord, and that's all. It just means Lord. Uh, could, it doesn't mean God. It, it just means the Lord, the Master. Judges 2.13, and they forsook the Lord, meaning Yahweh, and they served Baal and Ashtaroth. All right? So this is, uh, in this reference, it is a deity specific of the nations that they were you know, fighting against at that time. But Baal and Ashtaroth essentially on equal footing there. First Kings 16.32, he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. So this is Asa, king of Judah, and he was evil, so he built an altar to Baal. So back in that time, this is, you know, 1000 BC or, you know, that time frame, uh, the Baal was a specific deity, probably of the Canaanites, I believe. Yeah, okay, I put in the next, <laughs> the next note, the deity of the Canaanites. Uh, and the word Balaam is used in the Bible too, and it's plural for Baal, meaning, and it just means idols of the deity, you know, idols of the Baal or whatever. And they had little bitty pocket sized ones. They had some that were as small as children, as big as children. And then they of course had giant ones that were in the uh, temples. The children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Balaam. So now this term, because Baal is the root of Baal Zebub or Beelzebub. All right. So this was actually the name given to the Philistine God which they were Canaanites as well. They were similar to the Canaanites, but you know the Philistines had theirs. They called Baalzebub, and it meant Lord of the Flies, or actually the term is Flyers. And that's interesting to me right away because the Lord of the Flyers, what was Satan? He was Prince of the Spirits, right? And so you could, those terms could be just reimagined to be Lord of the flyers, Lord of the spirits. This is Satan, probably. So that is a clue, at least, right there. Beelzebub is a Greek form of Beelzebub. That's why you see in the New Testament's Beelzebub. Uh, it's just Greek changing that word Baal to Beel. Um, it, it doesn't mean anything different. It's just the same word in Greek. 2 Kings 1, 2, 3, 6, and 16 know that... Uh, Back then, even, they had a god they called Baalzebub, and it was called the god of Ekron, a city in Palestine at that time. So, uh, again, mentioned here, the Lord of the Flies parallels Satan's role as the prince of the powers of the air in Ephesians 2.2. 2. He commanded the fallen angels and unclean spirits here un under the firmament on the earth. That's his host to command and use to work his will, which is the accusing of mankind, the bringing down of mankind. Uh, very interesting. We'll go more into that role of Satan uh, in the last video. So in the Bible, just so you know, Baal is called the prince of demons. He's connected to the devil. In Acts of Pilate, which is uh, part of the Gospel of Nicodemus, 1-1, one, one, Prince of the devils, is, Satan is called, or Baal is called Prince of the devils, and Baal is an unclean spirit, as said in that passage. And in the descent into hell in the Gospel of Nicodemus 7 1, he's called the Prince of Perdition, the Chief of Destruction, the Scorn of the Angels, and the Spitting of the Righteous. So that is all attributed to Baal or Beelzebub in the Gospel of Nicodemus. Beelzebub was known as the Prince of Demons throughout the first century. All right, just in general, in all the writings that I've seen Beelzebub, he was the prince of demons. And he is also the key holder and guard of hell or Hades, as we saw before in other passages uh, that Satan was the holder of the keys of Hades. But that is attributed to Baal also in these writings. So the Gospel of Nicodemus, demon, the demon Hades or, fall, or angel Hades, 
of the underworld calls Satan Beelzebub. He just calls him Beelzebub right there. So you know that he knows that Satan and Beelzebub are the same. 7-1. Then Hades, receiving Satan, the prince, with sore approach, said unto him, O prince of perdition and chief of destruction, Beelzebub, the scorn of the angels and spitting of the righteous, why wouldst thou do this? Let Christ die and come down to Hades. So uh, it, that's just the passage, but it's obvious that you know Hades is talking to uh, Satan and calls him Beelzebub. Baals were commonly worshipped by the pagan and Canaanite nations and by the Israelites at times, of course, when they were fallen away from God. But Baal is not a specific god necessarily. It was at one time in, in the Bible some references were specific, just like the term Satan, as some you know references are specific to this deity or entity, rather. But then other times it's generic. Same with Baal. It can be a generic word for Lord or Master, but it also can mean the god of Ekron, as we saw in the Old Testament, or specific uh, Canaanite deity. Uh, and the Balaam are idols, pocket-sized often, uh, or larger ones. And then as also a summary here, we got the deity of the Philistines, Beelzebub, Beelzebub, whichever you like to say. Literally, it's the Lord of the Flyers or the Lord of the Spirits, the Prince of Demons, the Prince of Devils, Chief of Perdition, Scorn of the Angels, Keeper of the Keys of Hades, and it's another name for Satan specifically linked in the passages we've read. So, then Belier, and we're going to go through this quick to try to finish up this video. It's a long one, uh, but it's the longest of the f uh, six videos, so stick with me. Belial, Belier or Belial, it's the same word really, from Hebrew, bel -yal, which is destruction. And it literally means worthlessness. Uh, it's from Beli, without, or Yaal, to use, so it has no use. The, those who follow Belial are worthless. Belial in the Bible, Deuteronomy 13. Certain men, the children of Belial, are gone out from among you and have withdrawn the inhabitants of the city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which you have not known. 2 Corinthians says, And what concord hath Christ with Belial, or part hath he with that believes with an infidel? An infidel, now that's an interesting term because it's someone who was good and turned evil. All right? So Belial, or Belial, is that nature. He had been good and turned bad. <clears throat> now that might spark a parallel reference in your head to the things we've read about Satan. Quite a few other similar references like these in the Bible, children of Belial, those sons of Belial, all of that. And it means those who've turned from God and are, are wicked, are doing wickedness. The Gospel of Bartholomew and Belial, which in the Greek, Sylvanic, says devil, same thing, devil, Belial, said unto Hades, Belial and the devil are equivalent in this passage, right? And it's linked to Satan in this passage, in this book, and in the Gospel of Nicodemus. Belial and Hades are obviously different spirits, different angels, all right? So we don't want to get Hades confused up with Satan or Belial, but we can say that Belial is Satan, Belial is Satan, uh, and so there's that connection. In 4, 10 through 14, Jesus shows Belial is the adversary of men to the apostles. He talks to the apostles, and he says that Belial is the adversary of men. And that's directly in this passage connected to Satan. Uh, and in this passage, verses 10 through 14, they actually, Bartholomew has asked Jesus to talk to and see Belial, and he is allowed to go down into Hades and see him bound and talks to him. And that's what this passage is about. I'm not going to go into all of this because of the length, um, but it says right there, you know, that he's the adversary of men. So he is directly connected with what we've heard about Satan. In the ascension of Isaiah chapter 4 too, he's a great ruler. Belial is mentioned as a great ruler and a king of this world. He persecutes the church he does signs and wonders and deceives many. Now, what does that sound like? That sounds like the second beast in Revelation, doesn't it? Interesting. Um, he sets up his image, the beast, uh, like the beast. And then Jesus drags him and his armies to the lake of fire at his coming. And that would have been around 70 AD. Uh, 
or at least there's a connective there. So uh, thinking about when Jesus would bind Satan or fight with his armies um, at that time. So a summary of Belial research here. We, we went faster through that, but I think we established that it's another name for Satan, Belial or Belial. It's a different entity than Hades. So Satan and Hades, Belial and Hades, not the same. Christ and Belial have zero in common from the Bible. It's like, what does Christ have to do with Belial? And his followers are worthless or useless to God and to everyone, really. They're wicked. Belial is said to be the king of this world. And we've heard that term, that uh, phrase used for Satan multiple, multiple times. So this is a very strong connective tissue between the liar and Satan. So coming in part five, we are done now for part four. Whew, that was a big one because of Satan and Baal and Belial, tough ones. Lots of information, but Azazel, Mastema, and the devil in part five. And then in part six, we're going to wrap it all together and talk about all the commonalities at once and we're going to get this very clean clear picture of who satan is so stick with me man whoo it's um it's tough on the vocal cords to do these long ones <laughs> thank you guys for your support thank you for being with me i hope I, I just pray that you know this is why i do this to give you guys information hopefully that you know i've done a long a lot of legwork and it is something that god's put in me to do this and read these sources and read all this information but man, if I can help you guys at least spark interest in some of these things and seeing how all of it connects together, because man, the more I read, I will just tell you, the more all of it connects together. And I mean, you know, people talk about, you know, this writing's not inspired and that writing doesn't sound right. And this one has a conflict. I know that conversation exists, but man, if you just shut up and read it all, I'm not kidding. Shut up and read it. You will start to learn so freaking much about things you used to think you knew. Um, so I, I just really, it's an encouragement. I i get passionate about that because, man, I, God shows me so many things by doing this, taking this approach of read first, then verify with God. And it is... Um, Man, it is a blessing to me. I hope it's a blessing to you. If if it has helped you in any way, please like and subscribe. I just want to keep building the channel so that more people see the information that's available. Most people don't know about this information. So, God bless you. Thanks for being with me. Stick with me for part five or part five and six coming, and don't miss part six when we connect all this together. See you later.